there's been a mixed response to an announcement by Burma's military regime that it plans to hold multi-party elections within three years. While Australia has dismissed it as a sham, the proposal has been welcomed by ASEAN members. It comes as millions of Burmese live on the breadline amid an economy that's been crumbling in the wake of last year's bloody riots and tougher sanctions. Others who flee to Thailand are forced to work in backstreet sweatshops for as little as $4 a day. It's early morning on a quiet stretch of the Burmese border. A boat slips across the stream towards Thailand, safely out of sight of the official crossing point. These people are part of an exodus. More than a million Burmese have now crossed illegally into Thailand, the clearest proof of Burma's economic collapse. I've come to see the back street sweatshops where so many of them find work. Earning maybe two pounds a day if they're lucky. This 18-year-old arrived last week. He asked us not to reveal his identity to protect his family in Burma. It's very difficult at home, he says. There's no work and no pay. And Burmese soldiers kept coming to our village and demanding money. Living conditions are often grim. We were smuggled into the dormitory of a large knitting factory by a group of angry workers. 450 people, men, women and children, sleep crammed inside this dark shed. The rent and the food is deducted from their wages. The man showing me round has lived here for five years. It's still better than rotting in Burma, he says. I can send money home to my family. But we have no rights here. If you complain, you lose your job. It makes me angry. When they come here, they have better food, better pay, and they have freedom. This is a lot more than they had in Burma. But the risks are considerable. The Thai police catch and deport 100,000 unregistered Burmese every year. This group is being taken to the border now. Many have been on this journey before, and they know what's coming. At the border, the Burmese are handed over to middlemen, who make it clear they don't want us around. It seems the workers will be forced to hand over their savings to secure their release. It's a murky end to a desperate business. Andrew Harding with that report on the plight of Burma's refugees.